Are you wondering what's new in WordPress 5.4? A few days ago, WordPress released its first major update of 2020. And I think there's a few things in there that you guys are going to love. I want to welcome you to the WordPress Made Easy Show. I'm your host, Jennifer Franklin, and I help entrepreneurs create and grow their WordPress websites quickly without stressing out over design or tech. If you're new here, consider subscribing and ring the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. Stay tuned because in this video, I'm gonna share with you what's new in WordPress 5.4 and which features I think you'll want to try after updating your website. Here we are on my demo WordPress website. I just updated this site to WordPress 5.4. And I created this website with the Astra WordPress theme as well as the Astra starter site. If you are new to this channel and you wanna check out how to create a website quickly and easily with Astra and their Astra starter sites, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the card as well as in the description below and you can check that out. In order to find out which version of WordPress you have installed, you would simply go to your dashboard and down in the right-hand corner, it will tell you which version. So we have version 5.4 installed and that is the most up-to-date version as of today, April 3rd. The first change that I think you'll notice right away is that the full screen editor will be default in WordPress 5.4. WordPress 5.4 is focused on improving the block editor. The first change that you'll notice is the full screen editor is now default in WordPress 5.4. If you're upgrading from 5.3 using the same browser that you normally use, then your editor will open up with the last mode that you use. So you won't necessarily see the new full screen editor unless you're logging in on a new device or in an incognito window. Over in the right hand corner, you'll see three dots. If you click on those three dots, you can scroll down and click on full screen mode. And that will bring you back to the original way of editing, which is with the menu on the left hand side. To switch back to full screen mode, Go ahead and click that and you'll get back to full screen mode. The next thing that you might notice is that the buttons in the top left hand corner are nicely spaced and there is a new top tool, which is the select tool. The select tool offers you different options for selecting blocks. For example, you can go ahead and click on select. This will allow you to click and select an entire section or column easily. So here I can go ahead and click on this entire section and then I can dive in and click on a, a column. The next new feature I think you're really going to like is breadcrumbs. This will allow you to easily move between rows, columns, and content blocks so that you can choose them in order to edit them quickly and easily. Here you can see down in the bottom left-hand corner, the breadcrumbs from document to section, to advanced columns, down to column, down to the info box that I have selected here. If I click on column, it'll pop out so I can edit the entire column, advanced columns, back to the section, and then back to the entire document. So this just makes it so much easier to toggle between the different hierarchies of your um, page that you're editing. The next thing that I'm super excited about are two new content blocks that will help you create content faster. Now I'll be the first to admit that when Gutenberg first came out about a year and a half ago, I wasn't exactly that thrilled and ready to change. I really loved my classic editor, but the more and more that I use Gutenberg and have been building websites now with it, I find it a lot more useful and the ability to build websites so much easier. The first block that I want to show you is the social icon block. So to add a block, I click on forward slash and then I type in the name of the block that I'm looking for, social icons. Another option is to click on the plus button and then search for the block social icons. So I can add that there. The first thing that you'll notice is there are a number of social icons that populate automatically. In order to add a icon, 
with the link to your social media, you will need to then add the address to your social media. So for example, for Facebook, I can copy my Facebook link and then head back over and paste it in and click the enter. Now, if I move away from the social icon block, the two blocks that have an address will show. So the ones that I don't, that I have not entered an address, they will disappear. So you can choose from all the different social icons that are available at this time. One thing to note is that the social icons button is different from social sharing. Social sharing buttons will allow you to share your page or post if you click on the button. However, social icons will simply take your user to your social media. To add social sharing buttons, you can use a couple of different separate plugins. And I use and recommend Social Warfare. Another great tool that I love is Ultimate Add-ons for either Beaver Builder, Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor, or Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg. Now, in this example, I'm using Gutenberg, and I do have the Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg installed, so I could easily add the social sharing buttons using that um, tool right inside of Gutenberg. Um, the same thing would apply if you have Beaver Builder or Elementor using those um, optional plugins. And then Social Warfare takes a step further and they have a lot more um, functionality that I won't go into in this video, but if you do want to learn more about Social Warfare, I'll leave a link to that as well as the other Ultimate Add-on plugins in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions about anything I've covered so far or about social sharing plugins, leave me a comment below. I am always happy to help. The next new content block that I love is buttons. The reason why I love the new buttons content block is because you can add more than one button side by side. So for example, we can click on the plus button and add the buttons block. Simply add the text that you want for the first button. And then for the next button, you'll simply click on the plus button and add the text for that button. Now to edit these buttons further, I can add my link by clicking on the link. A link like that, I can have it open in a new tab if I'd like. To send them to the shop, we can simply have them go to the shop. Remember that you have more options over on the right hand side under the settings button. We can edit our buttons further by choosing a background color and text color. So if we wanna change the text, we can do that. And then add a background color. Oops. We can also choose to add a gradient. You can choose from predefined gradients. as well as the type and angle of your gradient. Several of the blocks in WordPress 5.4 have been enhanced, allowing you to update the text color as well as the background color. So I'll go back and I'll show you a couple of examples of that. WordPress 5.4 comes with more color options for some of the blocks. For example, in the paragraph block, we can choose to change the text color of just one section of the paragraph. In the past, when you updated a color, you had to update the entire paragraph. In the past, if I tried to update like Welcome to WordPress, it would look something like this, where the entire text was updated. So in this update, you can now choose to update the color of just one area by clicking on the little drill down area, going down to text color, and then choosing the color from the colors here, or you can enter a custom color um, by entering the hex value or choosing a color from the screen. Like that. You can also choose text and background colors with gradients for a cover block. 
and choose the background and text colors for all the blocks inside of a group. So for example, if we want to change the background color of this cover block and then the text inside of it, Another new feature is the ability to drag and drop your featured image. Previously, you needed to manually select um, your featured image. So over in the right hand side under settings and under document, you had to actually click on the featured image in order to add a featured image to your site like this. Now with WordPress 5.4, I can easily just drag the image from my computer to set the featured image. And it'll just take a second. And that's it. And lastly, you can now add your TikTok videos just like you would your YouTube videos right inside of WordPress with a TikTok content block. Do that by either typing in a forward slash and then TikTok. Ooh. Or I can click on the plus button and then search for the TikTok block. Click on that and that will add it as well. If I wanted to delete a block, I just simply click on the three dots and remove the block. The next step is to copy the link to our TikTok video so that we can use it to embed the video into our WordPress website. And then I'll paste the URL to the TikTok video and then go ahead and click on embed. And once my video has been embedded, I'll go ahead and click on publish and publish again. And then let's view our post. <laughs> and that's it. I hope you found this video useful where I share with you what's new in WordPress 5.4. If you're new here, consider subscribing and ring the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. Bye for now.